Okay, here's the problems that I gave you to try on finding the area between curves. Uh, if you didn't watch the other video, there was an intro video that you should watch first, and this was the last slide. So hopefully you had a chance to give those a try, but I wanted to give you some support if you were getting stuck on any of these. So in this video, I'm going to go over question one. If you're looking for a different one, then check a different video. Final answer for question one should be radical two over two. So if you did get radical two over two, you're probably good to move on. If you stick with me, uh, let's do it. So I do like to start these with a quick sketch, and that's coming from the concept of we might not know, um, especially with something like this, trig, weird, secant squared. I don't, I don't know how you feel about that, but I'm not loving that. Um, I might not know which one's on top, so it just kind of helps me process. Um, and then it's not going to be too bad. Uh, once we get it set up, it's going to be an integral. You guys are good at evaluating integrals, so we'll just apply the skills that we have. So secant x. Um, here's what I'm remembering from trig. I'm remembering that secant x is 1 over cosine x. So I'm remembering that we take our cosine graph and let's see, cosine goes something like this, right? And up to there, which we're not going to need all of that. Um, and this is my pi over, no, that's pi. This is pi over 2. Been a while. Okay. Um, that's not secant. That's cosine. Secant then is actually this. And what happened with the secant, because it's one over cosine, the reciprocal, is you ended up with these branches, the blue branches. So secant squared, um, because this value is one right here, everything else, all your other y values are greater than one, um, at least in this section until we get to pi over two. Uh, so squaring something greater than one is just going to make it bigger. So it's going to be a little steeper than if you're comparing secant squared to secant. Secant squared is going to be a little steeper of a curve. And the negative branches would obviously end up being positive. But we're only going to pi over four. So just a little bit of um, a conceptual understanding of that. Now let's get back to the problem. And point is not really to graph these functions, but we might as well review while we're doing it. So I'm actually only going to pi over 4, which is going to be partway on that curve. Um, and this is still 1 right here. And I've got to do sine of x. Well, sine of x is 1 at pi over 2 because it does that if I'm going all the way to 2 pi the full period. Um, so I'm just going to keep the branch that I need just to simplify here, which is that branch. right there. Okay, so it looks like secant uh, squared is going to be my top branch, and then my lower branch is my sine of x. So if I'm setting up my area is the integral um, from 0 to pi over 4, top minus bottom, it's going to be the secant squared x, minus the sine of x. And you could certainly go through and kind of separate your picture out there, draw it, and think about what the integral is finding, the areas, and how we're subtracting the two areas. That's what I did in my other video, so I'm not going to take the time to do that right now. That is going to get me the area between these two curves. From 0 to pi over 4 is right here. So that's what I'm actually finding. Um, now let's just do some integration now that we've got it set up. So I'm going to treat this as two separate integrals or think of it that way. I need to know what's the integral or the antiderivative of secant squared. Pause the video right now. Give it a go. If you were just stuck on the setup and then you can check back in for the answer, um, you do want to be thinking through these. Okay, so without a calculator, we need to practice all the trig we can practice. That's one of my rule reversals. So thanks for pausing the video. Uh, your check should be you should have gotten tangent x because derivative of tangent is secant squared. Derivative of sine, or sorry, derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it's going to be a positive cosine x. I always have to just do a sine check on that, and we're evaluating from 0 to pi over 4. So let's plug them in. I like to start with parentheses just so I don't forget my signs or mess up my signs because I've got two terms there. So I've got tangent of pi over 4 plus cosine of pi over 4 minus tangent of 0 plus cosine of 0 
write it out, folks, um, and then plug in. You're gonna if you try to do too much in your head here, it's not gonna go well. Tangent pi over four sine over cosine have to be equal, so that's um, one. I'm reversing, I'm doing tangent inverse. That's one plus cosine of pi over four is radical two over two minus. Still got the parentheses there. Tangent of zero. Sine over cosine at zero, sine is zero, so that's zero over one, which is zero. And cosine zero is one. So almost there, let's distribute one plus radical two over two, minus zero, don't need that, minus one when I distribute and the ones cancel out. So that is where I'm getting my final answer of radical two over two. Again, that represents the area that I shaded in red on that graph. Hopefully that helped. If you're feeling confident, try two, three, and four. I'll put videos, uh, separate videos together for this.